27-year-old Rick is Premier's biggest star. The champion of two belts already, he has a major fight coming up on Europe's biggest stage, Bama. If he wins, he could get that call up to the UFC and take the club with him. What you got here, you got the Fury MMA. The Fury belt, uh, the TK belt, and then yeah, all the grappling tournaments, kickbox tournaments and stuff on there. And then this is the first time I've ever been on a poster. Um, being from an Asian background, um, and then telling your parents that you know you, you, you're gonna fight and eventually you, you're gonna fight professionally and f leave uni and this is gonna be your job. Um, it was really hard at first. My uh, parents weren't happy. Um, they used to see me train, I'd come home with like, a bloody nose and I used to wear a lot of white t-shirts back then so there'd be blood on my top or someone else's blood on my top and my mum wasn't happy with it. Um, she wanted me to go to uni and study. Um, so it was tough. Then they saw me winning and then I turned pro and then now they're fully on board. I mean, my mum comes to every single fight. Mum, sister, brother comes to every single fight. I'm fighting for the Bama one, the lightweight um, British title in five weeks time against DKZ. And that's gonna be by far the biggest because that's an internationally recognized belt. Even Dave Casey, he thinks he's gonna out-wrestle me. I've been wrestling with the best guys in the UK. Um, so if he clinches me like that and tries to make it boring, I'll take him down and elbow him on the floor. Rick understands how fragile his dream is. He nearly lost it once before. Well, I had a really bad injury. I, I, I was uh, like having a grappling round. Um, someone took me down pretty aggressively, but I fell on my own hand and it twisted. Um, so it tore my, um, the most important ligament in your hand. I've never had such a bad injury. I've never been operated on in my life. The thing about this doctor is that I res why I respect him so much. Um, he, he gave it to me straight. If, if this operation goes wrong in any way, you can't fight ever again. Um, that was what hit me. I had everything that I love um, in an instant just been take away, taken away from me. But I knew my time would come. So if I all goes well, which it should do because I'm training hard, um, I'll be looking to make, make that, that step here yeah, to the UFC. I really believe that that's where I'm going to be. It's not just me saying it, it's a, it's a real belief that I have. There's just a few days left till Rick's big fight and his opponent is weighing on his mind. In preparation, I just think that I prepare and I train hard and I have no reason to lose. Like, what would be the reason for me to lose? Like, I, I train every single day. I believe in myself. Um, I think if I were to ever lose, it would be because I beat myself. But I'm, I'm mentally strong enough to not let that happen, no matter what. Whatever happens in the fight, uh, I'm, I'm not quitting, I'm not giving up. How long has Rick been training for? Six years. That's six years, Rick? Yeah. Six years. From zero, from nothing. I remember his first day, actually. There was a whole bunch of, I think he brought a couple of friends with him. Um, I thought, yeah, this, this fat kid's never going to stay. <laughs> and uh, stay. here he is, here he is. I sort of noticed quite early on that he's a bit of a sponge, you know, he's quite dedicated. I think he's quite obsessive, which, which definitely works in if you want to be good at something. Um, he does as he's told. Um, somebody like that is very coachable. So how important is this fight? It's, it's massive, it's huge importance to us. Um, and for me as a coach, he's the first guy that we've had that's had zero experience in martial arts to come in and A, fight on Bama, and B, take his title. Uh, it's massive for us. Uh, I think me as a coach, us as a club, Rick as a fighter, yeah, he's our first guy. You know? Where are we now? Uh, we're just arriving at Team Titan um, for the uh, MMA sparring. I personally, I think about my opponent every day. I sleep thinking about him, I wake up thinking about him. It's like a big weight that you carry around with you for 12 weeks. I'm constantly thinking about him. Um, and areas that I need to train to get better, to combat him. Uh, and then physically as well, you put your body through just 
constant training, constant just getting hit, pushing yourself to the limit where you can't go anymore. And I feel, I just feel you know, like it's, it's the hardest sport in the world. We haven't had a, a British champ in the UFC and that's what I'm aiming to be at. I'm not gonna stop till I get there. Put, put it this way, the last guy who fought in my division who had um, the belt that Rick's fighting for, for my division, once he defended it, it was in the, he, he's in the UFC now. When Rick gets it and defends it, that's a go straight away the avenues for the UFC, you know what I mean? Training this evening at 8 o'clock. Where did you find the energy, man? Oh, man. Rest and, and good diet. Good diet. It's just it's become a lifestyle now. Dublin, Ireland. The scene of Rick's big fight. The challenger, Rick Salvaraja, versus the champion, Mark Dickhazy. Rick will be looking to retain his flawless record of seven wins, two losses, zero throw. Tired from the travel to Dublin, hungry and dehydrated from cutting weight, Rick finally sees his opponent for the first time. So Rick, what happened there on stage? What was he saying? He wasn't really saying much, man. He was just putting his hands in my face. Typical, like, bully tactics of someone who's intimidated. I found it. I just said to him, we'll see you tomorrow, is what I had to say. Um, I didn't really get affected by that kind of stuff. He pushed you? Yeah, he just put his hand, hand in my face. Although Rick is a disciplined person, I could tell part of him felt disrespected. It made me wonder if this guy had got under his skin. Rick was supposed to have his hands wrapped hours ago, but it hasn't been done yet. Meaning he hasn't had a proper warm up. Chris is clearly not happy. And Rick seems uneasy. Are you still looking for the fucking joke? The rap guy? Yeah. Uh, what, an hour and a half ago, he told me 15 minutes. Hi. 
Dumbass, that's enough. He's in, he's in. We're, we're still, we're, we're still, so you need to tell the powers that be if he doesn't get good to let you get it. That's not, not going to happen. You can't dictate to me, mate. No, no, but then you can't dictate to us. We're here to put on the show, and if we can't, then what can we do? Everyone's on the same playing field, mate. Yeah, his, his, his opponent's been warming up for the last 30 minutes. He's been hanging around. Why has he been hanging around? Because he doesn't have his first round. I didn't know that I was a hand-up, sorry, come on, Josh. How long till I'm on? Say again? How long till I'm on? It's the fight after the next one. Slow it down a little bit, because we're ahead of time. You can still warm up with our wraps on. Let's face no, it. Yeah, yeah, we can, but... OK, but let's go. You get the idea. OK, yeah, I'm as pissed as you are, OK? It's OK. I'm going to make Finish this guy. We're not going to go there and spawn. We do it. We're going to finish Bad intentions. Every, every movement is bad intentions. One goal that we've done about. Guys, come on, we gotta go. Guys, what? Go! Representing Premier MMA from Harrow, England, Rick Salvaraja! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Also an MMA fighter, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, and weighing at 153.2 pounds. Also with a flawless record of 7 wins, 0 losses, and 0 draws, with 3 of those wins by TKO. Representing Atherton Submission Wrestling from
This round ended 24 minutes off the first round. Your winner by knockout and still runs now lightweight champion of the world, Mark Bonecrusher Tia Casey. Rick got caught with a devastating punch that ended his fight in just 25 seconds. I don't remember even who, who, who was there. I just remember people being there and then they said, you know, you got dropped. Are you all right? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And that's when I realized I'd lost properly. Even in the cage, I didn't really know. I was still a bit, it was all a bit of a blur, to be honest. Um, but then afterwards, I, yeah, I realized. That, that moment there, it was like shock. Like like someone had died, that, that was the sort of feeling I had, like where you're just taken back and you find it hard to even process stuff. I wanted to test myself against a quality opponent. He, he he's a lot higher ranked than me, and he he's got the belt and stuff. And I wanted to show that you know I'm better than him. And if he had dominated me, I would have been like, all right, this is what I'm going to work on. You know, he the better guy won. But I just don't feel like the better fighter won. I just feel like I didn't fight. Like it was so quick. No one really got to see me. You know, I was on a big stage where people can finally sort of get to know. Um, my fighting style and what I'm about and they didn't really get to see anything and, and I was gutted because I just I didn't get a chance to perform um, it's like all my sort of hopes and dreams sort of felt like they're just like they're being pulled away from me torn away from me the day after I woke up I, I was hungry I was just like you know what I'm, I'm gonna use this I'll earn my way back up um, this has changed my course um, a little bit, just sort of thrown me off a little bit, but I'm still heading towards the same goal. Um, and nothing's going to stop that, no amount of adversity is going to stop that. I will get to where I want to get to, um, and I'll make sure that, that I'll, get, I'll achieve my dreams. I, I'm not going to stop until I do. title is a big opportunity for me and uh, hopefully it will be a good fight. Anyone can get caught, anyone can get caught in a choke, get knocked out and it happens. Dude, I'm never going to let that happen again. Oh, yeah. Shut up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.